As much as I am a coach who helps people through this process, I am also in the process of doing this work myself. And Welcome to The Inner Fire. My name is Heather Evans and I am a self-care and empowerment coach. I wanted to record something a little bit different today because I think it's really important as somebody who talks about self-care and personal empowerment that people understand and recognize that as much as I am a coach who helps people through this process, I am also in the process of doing this work myself. And I've talked about this before on a couple of different platforms, but I think it is something really important to remember. And one thing that I've been working a lot on over the course of, I'd say, the past three decades of my life is understanding with and working through uh, my struggle with anxiety. When I was young, I had a tendency to get really overwhelmed in situations. I grew up in a U.S. military family. We moved around the United States and overseas. There was a lot of change in my life growing up. And I would become very overwhelmed by the amount of change and by not necessarily knowing when things would change or how they would change. I remember the first day of school was always a nightmare because I hated, hated, hated being the new kid in school. And when I was younger, this would manifest in anxiety attacks. And I think the the one that stands out the most for me from when I was young Uh, was right before I started high school. We moved to Germany. It was a move that all of us agreed upon as a family. My, My dad, my mom, my sister and I, we decided together that this would be a move that we would make, um, that the military was offering us and we, we chose to go there. And I remember feeling really uncertain about what things would be like there. And when you move with the military, you live in temporary housing before uh, on-base housing becomes available. And I remember it was a few days before school started. We had just arrived and we were living in this hotel room, essentially, is what these temporary quarters are. And the overwhelm and anxiety had started to build. But I didn't realize how much. I mean, I'm, I'm 12 years old at this point and I wasn't really that in tune with what was happening in my system. And looking back, I can see now what was going on. But I remember I accidentally spilled something on the television in the room. And, you know, it was water or a little bit of milk or something. I I, honestly, I can't remember. But I had probably one of the worst anxiety attacks, panic attacks, I'm not 100% sure of my life. I started hyperventilating. My mom actually had to wrap her body around mine because I just, I couldn't calm down. I I was really struggling. I was struggling to breathe. I was struggling to speak. I essentially just had a break (laughs) because the emotions and sensations in my body were too much for my system to handle. As a side note, I also now know that I'm an empath, and empaths are highly sensitive people that tune into other people's emotions very easily. We absorb other people's emotions and emotional states, and we can become easily overwhelmed in unfamiliar situations. And so this was kind of the perfect storm, right? We had just moved to a foreign country. We're living in these temporary quarters. School is about to start. I'm gonna be the new kid again. And, um, and my system was just done. And that's really, again, the first major anxiety panic attack that I can remember having. And as I moved through high school, I just remember getting overwhelmed a lot. I would get overwhelmed and short of breath and I would feel my chest tightening. And I had different ways of, of coping and food was one of those ways. I've shared that I, I overcame an eating disorder. I I lived with an eating disorder for over 20 years. It began when I was 13. And 
Controlling food was one of the ways that I was able to cope with the anxiety that I was experiencing. I'm bringing up anxiety because I know that it's something that a lot of people struggle with. And to this day, it's something that I have to be very careful to manage for myself. I have to work with it. In fact, only a couple of weeks ago, I was struggling with feelings of overwhelm and anxiety to the point where I began to have an anxiety attack <laughs> one evening at home. And anxiety attacks for me look like shortness of breath, tightening in my chest. Um, I move into, you know, you can go into fight, flight, or freeze. My tendency when I'm having an anxiety attack is to freeze. I I feel paralyzed, like I can't uh, move or do anything. For other people, it might look differently. Um, another symptom that I experience when I'm having my anxiety attacks is it's almost like um, a record skipping in my brain, so I, I keep replaying things over and over and over and over again. Um, but that being said, I'm I'm in my 40s now, and I know that I live with anxiety. I'm not. Um, I'm not crippled by my anxiety any longer. I can see it coming on and there are things that I now do to manage my levels of anxiety, to try to decrease the likelihood that an anxiety attack will happen. And those things for me include limiting my intake of caffeine, limiting what I'm saying yes to, um, asking for help and support. I'm still not very good at that. That's definitely a work in progress, but it's something that, that I strive to do. I have grounding techniques that I use to help me with my anxiety, and one of them is, is one that I'm going to be sharing with you um, in the next video. I do grounding practices as opposed to practices that get my heart rate going because when I'm in the midst of feeling anxious or overwhelmed, I actually don't need to increase my heart rate. I need to be doing things that bring me back down. I have a consistent meditation practice that I do every single day that allows me to tune in, center, and ground into myself. Anxiety is incredibly challenging and it can prevent us from doing the things that we actually want to do in our lives. I can't tell you how many times anxiety has prevented me from doing things in my life or has changed the changed the approach with how I've done something or has impacted my takeaway from something because I've been in a state of anxiety and overwhelm. And I know that this is true for so many of you out there. And I guess I'm sharing my story because, again, as much as I'm a, a self-care and empowerment coach, I'm working with some of the same things you are now. And I think it's really important that we acknowledge that those of us who are coaching, those of us who are teaching, we're doing this because we're doing it ourselves. And I would never teach or share a strategy or a technique with somebody that I hadn't tried myself. Um, it's, it's almost like people who are influencers and they have to try the product before they, <laughs> before they will um, advocate for it themselves. And that's, that's how I feel about the strategies and techniques that I share is that I have to have done them myself in order for me to be sharing them with all of you. So this was a really personal share. Um, I've been feeling like I've wanted to share this for some time. Not many people who know me would say that they would think that I struggle with anxiety. I have a lot of people who think that I'm very outgoing and confident, and I can be, and that's very true, and it's taken me a long time to feel outgoing and confident. At the same time, in the background, there is a, a a real experience of anxiety that I work with and that I'm mindful about and that I have to be intentional about being present with because if I'm not, that's when I start to get out of alignment. That's when I start to feel ungrounded. That's when the, that, that record starts to skip in my head and that's when I move into freeze. That's when my breath gets short and my chest tightens. And 
what I would say to any of you who are struggling with anxiety or overwhelm is know the signs, know, know what triggers your anxiety, know what triggers your overwhelm. Find people who can support you, whether that's a counselor or a therapist. Um, I was actually diagnosed with anxiety in my early 20s when I was in therapy for my eating disorders. Um, and so it's good to have knowledge. And if you've been feeling like something is off, if you've been feeling like you've been struggling with something and you haven't been able to name it or, or figure out what exactly is going on, ask somebody for help and go and and get an assessment and while I'm not somebody who could diagnose anyone with anxiety um, I know because I was what the signs are for me and it was really helpful for me to have a container in which to put this particular experience into and that container is the container of anxiety and so now I can name it I know it I'm familiar with it I see it when it's coming I see it when it's happening and as a result I am empowered to make choices to keep me healthy to increase my self-care and to ensure that I'm doing the best that I can to alleviate the anxiety and overwhelm in my life. I hope you found this helpful. I hope it was interesting. If you have personal experiences with anxiety and you want to share them, you can do so in the comments below. If you would like to see more videos like this where I talk a little bit more about my personal journey, you can also let me know that in the comments below as well. I hope you have an amazing day. Stay ignited out there. Thank you for listening and for giving me the space to share this part of my journey. And I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you.